Hi friends, welcome to Pathology Riddles. Today's topic is bronchial asthma. If you like our videos, please subscribe to our channel. Today, we will talk about the word meaning of asthma, its definition, etiology, pathogenesis, gross and microscopy, symptoms and signs, status asthmaticus, and diagnosis of asthma. What is the literal meaning of the word asthma? Asthma actually comes from a Greek word azin, which means breathing hard. There is some exciting news for the pathology postgraduates and the MBBA students who want to have an in-depth reading into the subject. Robin's Pathologic Basis of Disease, 10th edition, ebook is now available on Amazon.com. The hardcover edition is available for pre-order. Check out the link in the description box. We will let you know if the South Asia edition becomes available. Starting with the definition. If you understand this definition, you will understand the etiology, pathogenesis, signs and symptoms of asthma. Asthma is a chronic disease of conducting airways. So chronic disease means present for a long duration. Conducting airways means the airways still the terminal bronchioles. The second part of the definition is it is caused by an immunological reaction. The third part of the definition says that asthma presents as episodic bronchoconstriction which is due to increased airway sensitivity to various stimuli, inflammation of bronchial walls and increase in mucus secretions. Asthma can be divided into broadly two types. One is atopic, another is non-atopic. Now the characteristic of atopic asthma is that it is due to allergen sensitization which causes immune activation. It has a positive family history, presents in childhood and is due to various environmental stimuli. Non-atopic asthma doesn't have any history of allergen sensitization and there is no immune activation. Uh, the family history is rare in non-atopic asthma. Various triggers for non-atopic asthma are viruses, cold, exercise, smoking, air pollutant. Another way to classify asthma is based on cause. Now, the cause can be weather, either in winter season, rainy season, or due to excessive pollens during spring season. It can be uh, due to exercise, it can be due to drugs, it can be due to occupation, as well as uh, pollution. Next, we will elaborate a little bit about drug-induced asthma and occupational asthma. Coming to drug-induced asthma, what are the causative agents of drug-induced asthma? Yes, they are aspirin or other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So, what is the mechanism by which these drugs cause asthma? It actually inhibits the cyclooxygenase pathway, which leads to decrease in prostaglandin E2, which actually promotes the enzymes which uh, cause this anti-inflammatory effect. It causes asthma as well as urticaria. Coming to occupational asthma, occupational asthma is caused by minute quantities of triggers. Now these triggers might be fumes like epoxy resins, organic and chemical dusts, maybe cotton, gases like toluene, etc. The mechanism by which it causes asthma varies according to the trigger. It can be type 1 reaction or uh, direct liberation of bronchoconstrictor agents. Pathogenesis of bronchial asthma includes Th2 response, IgE and inflammation, genetic susceptibility and environmental factors. Although these three factors intertwine to cause the pathogenesis, we will be discussing it separately for ease of understanding. Now, atopic is the most common form of asthma. So we will explain about the pathogenesis of atopic asthma. What does the term atopy mean? Atopy actually means increased tendency to develop immediate hypersensitivity reaction. Atopy is genetically determined. The people who get atopy are those with other allergic disorders like allergic rhinitis, eczema, those with higher level of IgE or higher level of IL-4 producing TH2 cells than other general population, those with polymorphism in certain genes like the ones located in chromosome 5q31 region. 
So environmental factors can also determine whether a person gets asthma or not. Staying in an industrialized environment can initiate a TH2 response as industrialized area have more airborne pollutants. Hence, the people living in industrialized area will have more chances of developing asthma. Coming to hygiene hypothesis. According to this hypothesis, if a child is exposed to microbial allergens either during the antenatal period or during early childhood, the chances of developing allergic or autoimmune diseases is reduced. So as a consequence, the children growing up in western countries will have higher chances of developing asthma as compared to children growing up in third world nation. So now we will talk about TH2 response, Ig response and inflammation. In susceptible patients, there is an exaggerated TH2 response to environmental allergen that are normally harmless. So what happens? First, there is exposure to allergen of mucosal lining, which has these dendritic cells. Now these dendritic cells will go and present the antigen to a naive T cell, which will convert itself to a TH2 cell. Now this TH2 cells will start secreting cytokines. It will start secreting IL-4, IL-5 and IL-13. Now interleukin-4, what does it do? It starts stimulating B cells to start producing excessive IgE. IL-5 will stimulate the locally recruited eosinophils. IL-13, that is interleukin-13, will increase the mucus secretion from bronchial submucosal glands. Next, these T cells and epithelial cells will start secreting chemokines. These chemokines will attract more T cells, more eosinophils to that site for an exaggerated response. These IgE, which has been produced by B cells, will go and bind to the FC receptor of mast cells. So the next time this allergen comes in contact with the body, it will lead to degranulation of mast cells leading to release of vasoactive amines, lipid mediators and cytokines. The immediate hypersensitivity reaction is caused by these vasoactive amines and lipid mediators. The vasoactive amine consists of histamine and proteases, while lipid mediators consist of prostaglandin D2, leukotriene B4, leukotriene C4 and leukotriene D4. The immediate hypersensitivity reaction which happens minutes after repeat exposure to allergen consists of vasodilation, vascular leakage, smooth muscle spasm, as well as increased mucus production. So the next phase is late phase reaction. It occurs 2 to 24 hours after repeat exposure. In this, cytokine and leukotriene which have been released by mast cell and chemokines which have been released by T cells and epithelial cells lead to leukocyte infiltration, epithelial damage and bronchospasm. As we know, asthma is a chronic disease, which means due to repeated exposure of allergens, there will be an airway remodeling due to local secretion of growth factors. Now what will it lead to? It will lead to hypertrophy and hyperplasia of bronchial smooth muscles, epithelial injury, increase airway vascularity, increase subepithelial mucus gland hypertrophy, deposition of subepithelial collagen, as well as increase nerve proliferation. Clinical features of asthma are chest tightness, breathlessness, wheezing, cough with or without sputum. Now, if these symptoms last for days or weeks together, this state is called status asthmaticus, which is a life-threatening disorder. Now it will lead to airflow obstruction, which will lead to marked cyanosis and even in few cases death. Diagnosis of asthma. So the contributing factors to a diagnosis of asthma include uh, in comparison to baseline levels there will be an increase in airflow obstruction. There will be difficulty in exhalation and peripheral blood eosinophilia. In cases of atopic asthma there will be a wheel and flare reaction to a skin test. There will be increased total serum Ig level as well as RAST will come positive that is radioallergosorbent test. 
which will detect your uh, IgE antibodies against specific allergens. Sputum or bronchoalveolar lavage specimen of the patient will show Gerstmann spirals, which are actually mucus plug which are extruded from the subepithelial mucus gland ducts or bronchioles. Also present will be numerous eosinophils and charcoal-laden crystals. These charcoal-laden crystals are composed of eosinophil protein called galactin-10. Gross and microscopy of bronchial asthma. In cases of patients dying of status asthmaticus, there will be a overinflation of lung along with areas of atelectasis. Another feature is you can see mucus plugs in the bronchioles or bronchi. So the bronchial biopsy in a case of asthma will show the following features. There will be thickening of airway wall, sub-basement membrane fibrosis, increased vascularity, an increase in size of submucosal glands, and hypertrophy or hyperplasia of bronchial muscle wall. Please do subscribe and share if you like this video and comment if you want more videos of this kind. Thank you. Bye.